whether it's monetarily incentivized or just incentivized by sheer nerddom. <laughs> Um, the idea is, you know, a really good artist is, and this, this is a nice little sort of soft way, now that we can get out of all the conceptual jungle and the woods, we're sort of into a clearing now. This is a nice way of, a nice way of thinking of it is that a, a very good artist motivates others to participate in the practice of creating art. Like you're, you're, you're a good artist if people want to buy your stuff, sure. You're a better artist arguably, if it's not just the case that people want to buy your stuff as product, as end state, but if the creation of your work inspires people to participate in this overarching thing called art. And as a self-proclaimed artist myself, despite the fact that I can't draw to save my life, there's no greater, there's no greater sense of accomplishment, of mastery, of demonstrated mastery, than the ability um, to to help people want to participate, right? It's I don't look at it as competition. You do your thing in your series, in your lectures, in your analysis, I do my thing. There's no tension, there's no conflict, right? There's no there's no competition. It's a product, it's being the participation of others, is itself a product of masterful work, right, which informs the next generation. And then, you know, in a sense, this um, cyclical process continues. So for me, I you know I find this, I find this just absolutely intellectually rewarding. Okay, next, next image. So that was quick. Sort of, well, not quick. We've been doing this for a while now, but that was uh, that was an introductory account of. And I and I think of all the series that I've done, the first for this being the first few minutes, the first hour or so of a series, we've, we're, I feel like we're already dense. <laughs> I'm sort of scared where this series is going to go, but as I said, I'm going to do two hours and then I'm going to jump to something else and I'll come back to this because people have different interests. Me personally, I can see myself just doing this series for a good you know, 10, 12 hours till I got a little bored, but I'm not anywhere near that point yet. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to introduce an image that's going to be rather complex, right, and then justify it in the text, which is what I always do. So again, um, the, the image is a product of my analysis of Heidegger's uh, assessment of aesthetics and art at this level. We have meaning uh, as a we have meaning as a consequence of and then we have or oops, I made this too big or ACT. I'll, uh, let me write this down first and then I'll talk. And ACT, actual works of a art as a Complex. I'll explain this in a little bit. Let me read the, um, the citation from, from Heidegger, and this is the last bit for section 1.0. Heidegger says, quote, Since the question whether and how art in general exists, since the question whether and how art in general exists must still remain open, we shall attempt to discover the essence of art. We recognize this from the beginning. Right? We're going to attempt to discover the essence of art. In place, in the place where art undoubtedly prevails in an actual way. Where art prevails in an actual way. We've done so much theoretical sort of analysis in the first page. 
we're going to try and make sense of how art exists as actual stuff in the world. Art essentially unfolds in the artwork. Now, in the, and this is why I encourage you guys to, to get the book, right? Make sure that you get the book in order to follow along and understand the complexity of, of actuality. He talks about actuality, but uh, I don't want to get into too much discussion on it because I'm going to save a lot of that analysis for section 1.2. Think of it in this, in this terms, right? We have art referring, the word art refers, it points to the concept, right? This is, you know, in a sense, semiotics, right? The word art refers to this concept. This concept, art, right, as the as the source, if you will, of conceptualization, as a source of the utterance in semiotic terms, right? The word art refers to, what does it refer to? It refers to the concept. When I say art, you think of some abstract notion. That abstract notion, in that abstract notion, is the essence. How can we make sense of what that thing is? is what Heidegger is saying. How can we make sense of that concept, right? How do we make sense of that? We can do this maybe in one of two ways. So that this refers to some complexity here. And what is that? Meaning, as a consequence of actual artists and works of art. So that the meaning of art, when we talk about art on this half, Right? Meaning, as a consequence of the actual um, of actual artists and works of art, so that the meaning becomes the meaning of art. The meaning of art becomes a consequence of what the artist and the work. So when we talk about art, we're talking about the end state, right? When we talk about art, we recognize that, yes, we are in part talking about artists, and yes, we're in part talking about the final product, if you will, the final end state being the work of art, and the meaning of art is a consequence of that, right? So the significance of art is a consequence of the artist and the artwork. It could either be a, a disjunct or mutual exclusion, or it can be a conjunct and. I'm not here to tell you which is the right answer. I just want you to sort of understand, because I don't know an answer per se. And we'll see where Heidegger goes with this, but I like to leave things ambiguous and let you make your own assessments. That way it's not indoctrination, it's more sort of an, an insight and then you can play with the concepts yourself. Or, and, actual artists and actual works of art as a consequence of the meaning of art. So, meaning is a consequence of the work of art, or the work of art is itself a consequence of the meaning. So that meaning informs the artist and the work of art. Right? Think of it in a simple sense. Meaning comes as the consequence or meaning comes as the antecedent to be sort of in a conditional if then. Right? In sort of sort of obvious sense, as you can see, you can inverse the relationship. You can say that Meaning informs, essence informs both the artist and the work. Or you can say that the artist and the work inform meaning, what it means to be an artist. You can also do the conjunct and say that, no, this is a, you know, I'm not going to give you the answer now, but you can say that this is a bidirectional relationship. That meaning both informs and is informed by the artist and the work of art, which is conceptually much more complex. So to make sure that this this is clear, because this is dense, there are three possibilities, none of which I'm saying are totalizing, but logically speaking there's, there's three possibilities. You have meaning as the antecedent, meaning that the work of art and the artist is informed by, it is the consequence of the essence of art. 
the essence of art, whatever that thing is, which we don't know yet, is the source 